Grant McCauley joins us on the WadeFord.com hotline. By the way, pretty cool broadcast tonight, huh, Grant, with uh, former Hall of Fame pitchers in the booth with Chipper? Yeah, very, very cool. And that Jeff Frank Core guy is involved with this whole thing. So a lot of fun, you know, former Braves all under one roof, as they say. And I got to chat with Tom Glavin about it. He's very excited to be welcoming his longtime friend John Smoltz back into the mix. Those two guys have obviously known each other since, what, 1987, 1988, when Smoltz came over from the Tigers. And that obviously was a move that, or well, maybe not obviously, but it did open the door for Tom Glavin to get called to the big leagues because he took Doyle Alexander's spot in rotation. Maybe that's a story they'll get into tonight. Now they both broke into baseball and have managed to parlay it into broadcast careers. And Frenchie Hall of Famer because, of course, he was in the Georgia football. Hall of Fame. There you go. There you go. All right, buddy boy. We talked about A.J. smith Shaver, and now we know he's going to make his debut as a starter on Friday. Yeah, a lot of excitement involved with that. Hearing from A.J., you know, the excitement is there, as you would expect it to be, no matter what your age is. But I feel like there's a little bit more in his case because he's 20 years old. He won't turn 21 until late November it's very fascinating to see the Braves fast-tracking a pitcher to this degree. He's going to be the youngest Braves starter since Julio Tehran made his debut back in 2011. Julio was also 20 years old. I believe he was about two, maybe three months younger than A.J. smith Shaver is right now. But he started the season in Rome, pitching in a ball. Then, after three starts, he's in Delray, Mississippi for a cup of coffee and makes it all the way to AAA. And at that point, I think all of us knew we're starting to hear this name more. How did he get from high A to AAA that quickly, and how soon can he be in the big leagues? We got the answer to that question. He made two starts for Gwinnett, and now he's up. So it's going to be, I think, a great opportunity, maybe a little bit of baptism by fire for somebody who came into the season with 77 pro innings under his belt and is still just now over 100 for his career. But he's got the stuff, and I think he's got the wherewithal and the Braves are going to kind of throw him into the deep end of the pool and, I guess, see if he can swim. So let's talk about uh, the the contusion from what we're hearing, right, mm-hmm. with Pete Alonzo mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and how that all transpired. I, listen, I thought these two guys handled it as professionally as you possibly yes. could. Because, yeah. Grant, you and I both know, being around the game, sometimes things can escalate, taken the wrong way, and all it takes is one guy to go, yeah, I can't believe he threw it like that. And the next thing you know, you got two teams heated up, Neither one of these guys took that approach, and I think it's good for the game, but I also think it's good for this series because we just want to see good baseball, and the Braves are winning this series right now. Yeah, we have seen great baseball if you're the Braves. For the Mets, unfortunately, it's just kind of more the same for them as their losing streak continued. But you don't want to lose players, and obviously you don't want that to be part of any kind of rivalry between these two clubs. Charlie Morton is as professional as it possibly gets. He got up and in with that fastball to get a swing and miss on the first one. Wanted to get back in there. got away from him. If you're trying to hit somebody on purpose, you're not you know, throwing at the front and the wrists and the head and that kind of area. And I think it's just one of those things where a pitch got away from him. He made the effort to find Pete Alonzo and apologize to him uh, during the game yesterday. As a matter of fact, and Alonzo, being a professional about it himself, said, hey, just before anybody asked, Charlie Morton came over. He apologized. I know there was no intent there, and I want to squash it before anybody tries to make anything of it. So as far as things can be handled, that's about as good as it can be. I'm not a huge fan of, like, you hit our guy, we'll hit your guy, we're going to hit at you for what you said. Like, there just doesn't need to be a whole bunch of that. I think it kind of convolutes the method that the Braves like, which, as we talked about yesterday, is go beat them on the field. They can say whatever they want. It is our man, Grant McCauley, guys. And as you said, Grant, it was obvious to everybody, at least knowing Charlie, and if he's going to hit you, he's a veteran. You said it. He can plunk you. He's going to do some soft, soft, chewy parts on Alonzo Carl. I guess you could have sure. plunked. <laughs> but in this case, <laughs> you know, and we talked about this earlier in the show. It's like the Mets are trying to work themselves up and convincing themselves that they're ready for this moment. And it just shows you how clutch we are. And by the way, is there anything more fun than watching Scherzer die from a thousand cuts with like little bleeders and bunt singles last night? Yeah, I thought that was a, a nice touch by a Braves offense that is not known for that. I mean, and, and it crazy kind of the microcosm. I know we'll talk about Michael Harris because I just have a feeling that it's coming, but he got his whole night started with a bunt single that would have rolled foul, but a, a very, you know, um, I guess hyped up catcher, a young catcher in Francisco Alvarez decided to make a play, but he didn't really know the runner. There was no play to be had there. If he picked it up, Harris got that bunt single. Then he had the go-ahead double. Then, of course, the go-ahead home run a little bit later in the game. Great night overall for him. But, yeah, for Scherzer, if, if I'm telling you, well, Scherzer faced the Braves. He struck out 10 last night. You're probably saying, oh, man, how bad did we lose? Well, they also had 11 hits against him, including 
putting some rallies together, the Sean Murphy home run. I mean, the Braves hit some balls hard against Max Scherzer, and they've knocked him around a little bit more than just about any other team that he has faced, especially on a regular basis when you consider the head-to-head matchups with the Washington Nationals days and now his time with the New York Mets. So a lot of good things happen for the Braves in that game. They want to have it happen one more time here against somebody I think is going to be just as tough and it has been in the course of his career because both those guys are heading to the Hall of Fame, and by both those guys, I mean Scherzer and Justin Verlander, who goes tonight against Spencer Strider. We're talking with Grant McCauley, guys. Uh, Braves tonight uh, trying to finish this up. And, and listen, this has been a good homestand, uh, at least to start here. This is what we wanted because we need to distance ourselves from the Mets as much as possible. But let's talk about the, the, the key. You know, I, we said, would they allow Michael Money Harris to bunt? We didn't know how this would all shake out. But he did, and we just don't see a lot of that. I think more people were surprised at that one singular moment than Michael Harris going three for four and and hitting a home run late in the game last night. Just the idea that he came up and got on with the bunt. Yeah, and I think it's kind of all of those things, Carl, that kind of came together for him because, you know, and one of the fascinating undercurrent or understories about this or one of the offshoot stories, I guess, was that, you know, Michael scalded a ball in his final at bat yesterday, about 24 hours ago. The three of us were talking about it. Yep. And, hey, he's hitting the ball hard. Something's going to happen sooner or later. It's Marcelo Zuna who comes up to him and says, look, you know who you are. Your season begins from that at bat forward and forget about all the struggles and just move forward. And then you start to think about, as you brought up, how can I get something going? I'm speedy. You know, there is an occasion where a bunt is good, and that's when, the, you know, the defense is really not prepared for it. And they weren't, and it worked. But I'm glad he didn't bunt the next couple of times up just trying to do it over and over because he did have that line drive swing working as well. That was a tank job home run into center field, too. That's up on, like, that third level of that that rising garden that they have out there in the batter's eye. Michael Harris, I I think, and based on what I was seeing the last week and a half or so, dating back to the last homestand, was starting to turn that corner. And hopefully we'll be talking about that game against the New York Mets as the one where we felt like Michael Harris was back to being Money Mike because he certainly looked like it last night. So has Azuna ever come up to you in the locker room and said, it's not your fault? He's not your No, fault. he, he, I mean, he, he has he, but... he definitely, I mean, for what it's worth, he knows that nobody knows more adversity than this guy in the clubhouse who better to talk to Mike about it. Yeah, and that's what he kind of said because the reporters, once you, once you hear that, you're like, all right, well, this is interesting. And, and, you know, Marcel, who we've talked about a lot, his teammates don't have the same kind of, I guess, clearly the relationship that people from the outside might see or assume from a guy who's gone out, struggled on the field, gotten some trouble off the field, and just hasn't been able to, you know, put up the the numbers or perform in a manner in which the Braves had expected. But from a you know teammate to teammate perspective. Marcel's not a problem in that way. And, in fact, he's been more, I think, of a net positive in just in terms of the way that he has you know, kind of been there, done that, but it just wasn't working for him right now. So you don't want to be paying him $18 million for his quote-unquote veteran presence, but one of these times that it really helped out, I think, was just telling a young player, look, you know who you are. You're one of the best center fielders in the National League. And that's what Azuna said after the game that he told him. And, you know, Mike said that, he, yeah, I just had to remember I'm one of the baddest guys out here doing it. And he certainly is. So for Marcel or whoever it was, it's good to see that the teammates they have this kind of connection. You know, sometimes you might think, all right, well, you got the Latin contingent of the clubhouse over here. You got the relievers over here. The starting pitchers are over here. And then position players kind of mixed in. But I really do think that there's a nice synergy in that Braves clubhouse. It's been that way for a while. It's just one of the things that works, Mike, to the thing you point you asked earlier about the Mets trying to get themselves all hyped up. The Braves just have something that seems more functional than what the Mets seem to have, and it's not because they're just in a whole bunch of trouble all the time. It's just the Braves have grown it this way over time, and that, I think, is just one of the keys to their success. Uh, talk about A.J. Minter. Um, he stayed confident. He was good last night. I mean, you talk about mm-hmm. you know his early struggles. We said this. He was closing games, guys. Remember at the beginning of the season because Iglesias was injured, coming off the injury, and so you know he was working his way back. But mm. I, I still trust A.J. Minter. I, I like what I've seen. Yeah, and the big thing was, and I had a long talk with A.J. on the homestand before this, right before that road trip. I played the interview on From the Diamond a couple of Sundays ago, and he said, look, I I don't know what the answer is because I haven't really changed anything. Mm -hmm. He wasn't walking guys. He wasn't just giving up nothing but home runs. It was just there was some bad, bad ball luck in there. But he said, look, I'm not ever going to use that as an excuse. I got to figure out what I can do to maybe get more life on my fastball. Not that I've lost my velocity, but it's just not as lively and as electric as it has been in the past. I need to get that going, and that's going to create opportunities to use the cutter 
and the changeup is much more dangerous pitches once hitters really have to be aware that, hey, this guy's going to get on me quick with 97 miles an hour. i got to be ready for that. And that's what's made A.J. so good. And so credit to him, he kind of stuck with it, and he joked about it. He said, you got to be a little bit sick in the head to go out here and see this kind of thing keep on happening. <laughs> but I've also got to keep working through this because I know the good results will be on the other side of this. I just want to get this out of my system because I want to be helping this team win games, and I know we're going to have some big games to win later this year, and I'd much rather go through it now if I have to go through it. So I think he had the right mindset and the physical tools and abilities and the arsenal was certainly there. And now he's starting to see the results. Six straight scoreless outings for him as he picked up the save last night. We know what Strider's all about. I uh, looked at some of the numbers and some of the stats are a little confusing. What's Verlander been so far? I think kind of a mixed bag, but he might could chalk that up to injury as much as anything. I mean, he's going to have the the same Justin Verlander arsenal, you know, good, lively, fast balls he always has had. And, you know, breaking balls, off-speed pitches, and he just knows what he's doing. I mean, at this rate, when you're two decades into a career, you know who you are. And for him, a power pitcher, he hasn't really had to change too much. And, you know, he's a guy that I I think has eyes or designs on trying to get to 300 wins. And it's probably going to take three, four more years. And the injury this year didn't help him out in that regard. But who knows how long he might pitch. He might kind of try to take that Tom Brady route. And as long as he can do it, he's just going to keep signing contracts. And I think teams will keep bringing him in. Well, Grant, looking forward to seeing what happens tonight. Uh, hopefully we can finish this thing off. And, and a, a guy just asked me real quick, AJ, if he pitches well, smith Charver, is he automatically going to be in the rotation or is this a game, you know, start-by-start start kind of deal? I think it's still start-by-start, start, just a, the short story. And, you know, you want to just see what he can do. Every outing that he gets is an opportunity. But clearly, when you've already gone from relieving to starting, they see a lot in this kid. I think he's going to get those opportunities. Now it's just going out there executing pitches and keeping it simple is what A.J. said he's going to try to do. Great stuff. Grant McCauley, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.